not been had, I'm just driving. I'm praising the most high. Shalam, shalom, shalom, shalom. Whatever it is you're saying. I've seen people arguing about the name of the father, the name of the son. Everybody act like they got their Hebrew perfected. Every time I turn around, they got a new word. They're saying something different. That's why I'm getting the debates about this. Let's look at this. Alright, so we are um, traveling right now. And so we were just talking about... Well, I had to ask my husband a question, so I'm going to ask him again. Because um, I think it's really insightful what he had to say. So my question was... I forgot what my question was. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So he was talking about science. And he was talking about energy. And he was basically explaining, or you were explaining how, um, like, when you focus on something, like, energy turns into heat. Like, focus energy is, like, concentrated energy that turns into heat. And that's how people are able to, like, bend a, bend a, spoon. Bend a spoon. So then I was basically asking from that... basically from that I was asking is that where visualization comes from um, and is visualization bad and then from there we kind of started talking about like law of attraction versus what believers in Christ really should be doing which is law of confession so I'll let you explain I was just okay. giving a background I was explaining how I feel as though if people really understood the reality of what the world is they probably would live different because a lot of this stuff is not real I'm not talking about what people be on about, like, oh, they lying and all this. No, I'm talking about, like, just the reality. When you understand how matter works, the fact that, like, air is actually fluid and stuff like that. Like, we breathe the oxygen, but the air itself is, like, a liquid, right? And just the different principles and stuff like that. And you understand how molecules work and everything on a, on a micro level. You get to understand how the reality is that outside of like the physical existence we find ourselves in this stuff is like it's fabricated for lack of a better term and the reality is you, you see just how real the reality of the spirit is and i think as believers in christ we don't have enough understanding awareness or knowledge of what that looks like in order for us to really take serious our walks with the father in order to really take serious you know, the consequences and the weight of our actions and our sins. Because everything that happens in the physical is like a reflection and a manifestation of the spiritual. Right? So an emotional outburst is just a reflection of your spiritual state. Right? And if, you, if you're if you in a low spiritual state, you more than likely you are controlled by your flesh. So a lot of your emotions and your actions are going to be rooted in the flesh because your spiritual state is bound by the lower level of that flesh. So, with that, right, there's a lot of stuff that the Bible talks about in this because a lot of people don't talk about it, it's just like this, it's a lot of hush-hush stuff where people just don't understand, where it's, it's oversighted or it's not talked about enough and that's where people get that's where people get deceived and they start practicing witchcraft. Or they get deceived and they start talking about like Christ consciousness and all this other stuff where the devil's able to come in with perversions and distort reality, the reality of what the scriptures are saying and make it seem as though Christ was teaching sorcery and stuff like that. But that's, that's not the case. Ultimately, what's going on is like, there's just principles and truths of the spirit that the kingdom of darkness and the fallen angels brought to this earth and introduced to mankind. And mankind was not in a place of responsibility or understanding to manage that stuff, right? It's, it's, it's no different than if you give a child something that's dangerous and you say, here, use this, and you don't teach them how to use it responsibly and stuff like that. So, what does that mean? We ended up getting a conversation about like laws of attraction and, and different things like that. And kind of breaking down what that looks like, why stuff like that is wrong, but how does how do those spiritual principles also apply to believers, right? So pretty much what I was explaining was the fact that a lot of times the way that sorcery works, it deals with intent, like setting your intention on something, like because you're trying to it's about your will. Like you're trying to will something to happen, you're trying to make it happen, like in a sense, like you are God, for lack of a better term. Like, like you're trying to place yourself in a position that's reserved for him. The scriptures clearly speak against that. 
in Matthew, right? When the, when the scriptures say, don't seek after the things of the world, your father in heaven already knows what you need, right? He says, seek after his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. So ultimately, that's where you start to get into the difference between the law of attraction, where you're not, you're not trying to attract anything to you. You know what I'm saying? Now, on that aspect, your spiritual state will draw stuff to you. If you are getting attached to some things, you will attract the, the, the spiritual aspect that you're putting off. So if you're putting off darkness, don't be so surprised when you start attracting demons, right? And and if you start putting off or conversing a certain way or doing certain things, don't be, don't be surprised when you attract that to you, right? Which gets into a whole lot of different things about why these, these music and all this stuff is trying to get you to talk a certain way, think certain ways, dress certain ways. And you be like, I don't get why they they looking at me like this or why they approaching me like this. It's, it's because of the spirit you draw in that, right? But outside of that, where how how that those concepts do kind of apply to believers outside of that aspect is like the law of confession. And so how believers can understand what that means is you got to know what the scriptures say. You got to know what the Most High says about His people. You got to say. The scriptures say his, his thoughts are above our thoughts and his ways are above our ways. Well, how do you come to understand what his thoughts and his ways are? It's in his word. He had it recorded and written down for us so we can know him. Right? His name isn't hidden. He desires us to know his name. That's why he got all these prophecies about us calling on his name. Right? He plainly told Moses what his name was. Right? He says he's, he reveals those, the, the, the hidden things. Right? The scripture also says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Those who seek him will find him and stuff like that. So... Clearly, we serve a God who desires to be known by us. We serve a God who desires for us to, to, to understand how he functions and to fellowship with him. That's one reason Christ came, so we could be made right in a place to fellowship with him again, right? And when you understand what the word says about you, when you understand the promises of the Father, when you understand the covenant, when you understand the fact that he doesn't break his promise, he doesn't break his word, and you begin to come into alignment and agreement with what the word says about you and how he is towards you and what he feels about you. Then that's where you can start to walk in that principle of the law of confession, which is not the law of attraction. You're not trying to attract anything to you. You're simply seeking after the father. You're seeking after his righteousness and his righteousness is obedience, right? Like you have the righteousness of Christ, right? That's your salvation. That's where you're rooted. But you're walking in obedience to the things you know he's telling you to do in the seasons that he's telling you to do them in. Because as you walk in those obedience, there's things that he's already planned for you, but you gotta do your part, right? Like if, if the most I wanna put some wealth into your hands, it's not prosperity, right? If the most I wanna put wealth into your hands and he gives you the blueprint for how to get that wealth and you don't obey that blueprint, don't be surprised by all oh, the devil attacking me. If you don't step into what he's already planned for you to, to, to step into, like your disobedience robbed you of that. If the Most High gave you a blueprint for, for what a godly family looks like or what a godly marriage looks like and says, if you do these things, you will be blessed, then don't look at him like something's wrong because you failed to, to walk out that blueprint. And that's the thing a lot of people misunderstand about the commandments and different things like that. Like, it's, it's not salvational stuff. It's, it's the reason why the blessing is attached to it. It's not just because, like, I'm not going to get into all of that, but it's, it's the blessing is like the Most High is like, look, I created you, I created all things, I know how this stuff works. Because I made it and I know how it works, if you do what I'm telling you to do, you're gonna be okay. If you don't do it, you're gonna be cursed. Why? Because you are you you're walking out of the pattern of how things are supposed to be. So don't you don't be surprised when it doesn't function how it's supposed to be. Because the opposite of a blessing is a curse. If there's a way he designed it for it to be blessed, if you walk outside of that design, you will be cursed. It's just as simple as that. And so the law of confession is ultimately you confessing and you're speaking and you're believing those things of the word. And it's not so it's not like speaking things into existence because I don't believe that. Right. Because you can't go outside and say cat and then the cat appear. Right. We know the most high that he speaks things into existence. Right. His word is what creates all things. But the purpose of you confessing what the word says is because you are reprogramming your brain. Satan has programmed a lot of our minds based off of the world, based off of the psychology of, of this marketing and how all of this stuff is like the social side. Like the, the, the science gets deep on it as far as how he has wired our brains and programmed our brains to be triggered by certain trigger words. 
things that bypass our conscious and gone directly into our subconscious to activate at different times. That's why you'll find yourself in a situation and somebody trigger you. You know what I'm saying? They're pushing your buttons and all these different, we gotta upload that lesson. But like, we did a lesson on it. Like, think about the words you use. Don't push my buttons. Why well, I was triggered. If you understand what a, what a push button is or a trigger is, it's a switch that activates a program, right? So if someone is triggering you or, 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 or pushing your buttons, what, what you are saying without realizing it is they are activating a program that has been implanted into your subconscious and that program is taking over from your subconscious and bypassing your conscious mind. So when you are reading the word, the scriptures say, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? Why do you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind? Because as a man thinks, so is he. You say whatever you write, right. so you gotta heaven. break whatever that you line, you are not flesh. You've been losing like the power of the saying, oh, I'm only Christ. human. But you if you find yourself to say, oh, I'm, I'm gonna keep sinning, or I'm gonna keep doing this, or I'm, cause I'm only human, you are binding yourself to the very thing that you have already been loose from. And you are denying, what's that? You're walking in the form of godliness and you are denying the power thereof. So that confession, right, is you articulating because that's something that happens when you speak a word in your brain. If you're studying flashcards, it's one thing to read something, it's one thing to take notes. Sometimes you gotta articulate it out loud because it's, it's a different activation of a different part of your mind, right? So when you are confessing the word and what the word says, you are reprogramming, retraining your mind, you are renewing your mind to come into alignment with the programming of the Holy Scriptures and you are deprogramming yourself from the things of the world so you are no longer triggered by what lords over the systems of this earth and you are only responding to what lords over the kingdom of heaven as you're on this earth and when you do that, that in essence is the practicality and the reality of seeking the kingdom of the Father and his righteousness, right? So that all things that he's portioned out for you might be added unto you. And that's different than the law of attraction because the law of attraction is you can do anything you want to do and if you just set your intents on this, if you visualize this or you do all this and you do this, it's going to come to you regardless of how you are. You know what I'm saying? That is what the scriptures say. Anyone who tries to come but by me as a thief and a robber, if you're trying to access the things of the spirit around the most high, around the Messiah, then you are a thief and a robber. And what that scripture is telling you, and I'm telling you this plainly, right? Because a lot of believers, they be like, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and it's working. Yeah, witchcraft works because it's the father is the father. His laws are not void. He doesn't speak something and it doesn't come to pass. There's certain things he's established that are just universal truths. There's certain principles he's established for how the spirit works, and it's possible to access that stuff outside of him. But he said, if you do that, you are a thief and a robber because you are illegally accessing the spirit. The right way to access that stuff is through faith in Christ by obedience to the Most High and allowing him to give you what you are supposed to get. And that all circles back down to the Garden of Eden. They accessed that forbidden knowledge in the time. It wasn't... It wasn't proportioned out for them. That's all I got. I'm getting hot. Get the spirit on me. <laughs> Teacher, that's what I was saying. Woo. Teacher.